conversation tonight, my guest is a renowned physicist, the director of the National Institute of Advanced Studies in Bangalore, but more than any of these, he's a Renaissance man. I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Rajaraman. This aspect of consciousness, um, how do you feel that, that your own uh, interest in this has been enriched both by, by the empiricism of modern science and the insights that uh, traditions have provided? In recent years, especially after the 60th birthday of Dalai Lama in this very hotel, they gave me a subject to analyze, like convergence and divergence between science and spirituality or religion, whichever you call it. And that, of course, brings you back to Buddhism and Shankara, because Shankara was the opposite of the Buddhist uh, philosophy. And this, both of them talk a lot about consciousness, mind, while, while the Buddha rejects divinity and things like that. He, the logic developed by the Buddhists is fantastic. It's very close to science in many ways. The one difference that I see is Shankara brings in the Brahman, and he says, that is the real one. Nothing else is real. And I believe that's the subjective part of our mind. The objective part, yes, we all see things outside by through our normal appreciation of things, through eyes, ears, nose, and all that. But the subject element is difficult to analyze scientifically. And so all this put together makes very interesting study and understanding for yourself. You mentioned sort of the, the approach of, of Buddhism on, on consciousness. Uh, could you elucidate on that for us? Well, the Buddha first of all says, well, don't bother me with questions like God. There is no such thing as a soul, but you must live a good life. But you have a, a conscious, uh, not a consciousness in the, in the usual sense. You have a mind that has to be trained. And he says, there's no need for all this business of reincarnation. The early Buddhism, the, it's the later Buddhism which brought divinity, incarnation, everything into it that was in the Hindu fold back to Buddhism. But the purer Buddhism is very interesting because it gets very close to science. But science itself is coming in some ways to the question of consciousness. So the Buddhist studies is halfway and most interesting if you study it from a scientific point of view. Then, of course, there is the later logicians like Nagarjuna who talk of nothingness. It seems very strange, but when you read fundamental particles and study fundamental particles, that also comes out from vacuum states. So one can find uh, parallels, but whether they are satisfactory to either side is a question of time, I think. In what ways? You, you just mentioned that Buddhism was coming closer to science. Well, science doesn't talk about divinity. It doesn't talk about the soul. Observation comes first. But at the same time, the Buddha says, a good uh, life, uh, a proper life is essential, the Eightfold Path and all that. And causality is a very important aspect of Buddhism. Causality is a very important aspect of uh, science also. Though nowadays, you, don't, you cannot recognize the cause, but it is there somewhere in some complicated form. So in this way, it mixes very well. And that was uh, our study in recent times, including some very fundamental aspects of you know, physics, nuclear physics, which I study and this philosophical aspects, it's, it's welding beautifully in modern times. Maybe if you had asked me this question 50 years ago when I started doing research, I'd have said, oh, leave alone all the spiritual business. Everything is material, but I'm not so sure now. How much of this, you think, is, is, is the tempering of age? Age brings a certain degree of maturity. And at the same time, if, uh, you require a staff to hold on to. But it's not simply I who may feel. You read, there's a new journal called Consciousness started by the hard-headed um, physicists because they can't explain it simply on chemical terms or neuron terms. There are many aspects of the brain which are strange. 